Peter Miller bought his first electric car five years ago. We're very concerned about the environment. He says people now are turning away from gas to save money. Do you know what the price of gas is, they say? I say, no idea. Well, it's close to $1.50 a litre, is it, at the moment? And that's the goal of a carbon tax. Make things like driving more expensive, and people will change their habits. The carbon uh, emissions levy that we, we put in place. A decade ago, Gordon Campbell's pro-business BC Liberal Party introduced the tax. Controversial at the time, it was the first of its kind in North America. It has been clearly a success. This UBC professor of economics believes a carbon tax is an efficient way to deal with emissions but admits it takes time to see results. Consumption per capita is clearly down, and of course we do have population growth, so in the end we're not saving quite as much as we would have liked. Between 2007, before the tax was implemented, and 2015, GDP in BC grew 17 percent. The province says net emissions dropped 4.7 percent, a decline but far from the initial 2007 target. The goal was to reduce emissions 33 percent by 2020. The current NDP government adjusted its targets this spring to give itself 10 more years and increased the tax from 30 to $35 per tonne. Ultimately, carbon pricing has not had the negative impact on our economy that was predicted. Quite the contrary. We are doing very, very well. Everything from the apple you buy and eat to the apple computer you buy and use comes with an influx of energy. Critics argue for the tax to work, it needs to be much higher, but that would drive away investment means you need a very high tax, which people, A, will not tolerate, and B, which will be economically ruinous and so unsustainable. Wake up and smell the coffee. But for Miller, a self-described disruptor, he says change for the environment will come at a cost. It absolutely should be going up until it hurts a bit. That's the whole idea. Renee Filipponi, CBC News, Vancouver.